Let's talk about some of the important topics from down to earth this time. Uh, the most important thing, the very first is a case study here. Now this case study talks about the native seed pre uh, preservation. So in Telangana, the idea under Sangarendi district was to actually work on the various seeds in the ratio 1 is to 2. That means two seeds would be sold but one seed would be kept for uh, the next things and therefore that is a way for preserving the seeds and seed indigenous varieties of millets greens could be preserved in this way also there has been a mother-in-law daughter-in-law sangam which has been introduced by Deccan development society and that is working on agricultural workshops for younger generations the next is similar to the cyclone fani cyclone mocha was projected with a wind speed of 277 per, uh, kilometers per hour and it was believed to be a super cyclone however uh, the direction changed and it hit myanmar instead of india the average intensification temperature reached 30 point 59 degree celsius the next is the black sea grain deal and this was uh, the opening of the region of black sea ports in turkey to actually transport the grains amidst the russia ukraine conflict and this was mainly to support the regions of spain turkey and china and provide grain access and export those now the next is plastic treaty uh, India believed in the concept of banning the single-use plastic in 2022 and announced the plan to begin, become a major global petrochemical manufacturer by 2030. The idea on a global treaty, treaty on plastic ban by 2024 was brought about and uh, India skips the submission to this meet. The next is high temperatures have been recorded across 28 states in 2022 for at least one month of record breaking temperatures and this is the number of states which have been impacted the worst has been seen in March also uh, very high ones have been reported in the months of December September so heat waves have continuously been increasing rapidly and is a sign of global climate change the next is the discontent in the region of Manipur. Now Manipur, there are many ethnic and linguistic communities and Mitai is one of the term used to describe the residents of Manipur. Now this Mitai is not a homogeneous group but includes certain scheduled caste as well as backward caste which are part of this Mitai group. Uh, the language commonly spoken in the region of Manipur is Manipuri along with Manipuri, uh, along with Manipur as one of the states where it is spoken. Other states are Assam, Tripura, West Bengal, uh, Myanmar, Bangladesh uh, as the neighboring countries where Manipuri is spoken. Now this area has turned out into a heavily militarized civil area which has seen a long protest and moreover it has a political base. There have been uh, conflicts on humanitarian issues, ethnic language and religion have been the major issues now what are the scripts which are commonly seen in manipur very important bangla meti mayak and roman meti mayak is uh, the writings which were adopted prior to the bangla adoption and therefore has been important now the demand for the st status is comparable to the maratha arakshan in maharashtra and the jat reservation in rajasthan now maratha in Mar maharashtra is not just the marat the people who speak marathis or people who are actually belonging to the state of Maharashtra but it is more of a cultural uh, community we could say the next is migration waves now as the cultural uh, as the climate change induced activities have increased we have seen that there has been a huge precedence in the migration patterns a huge number of migration was reported in Pakistan followed by India Pakistan somewhere around 8 million India somewhere around 2.5 million and 
and both of these cases reported internal migration that is within the country now over the evolution of homo sapiens we have seen with ice age uh, climate change episodes took place and there was a constant migration and those who are open to the migration would be the ones who would have the survival of the fittest there has been a declining working population in high income countries why because of this pattern of migration and uh, this is again one of the major reasons that uh, the developing nations would have increasing migration because huge demand has been seen in those regions now when we are witnessing a huge uh, urea uh, import the idea was to introduce the concept of nano fertilizer under nano fertilizer we first introduced the concept of nano urea in 2021 followed by nano dap in 2022 both have been brought by ifco but there have been um, disadvantages over the conventional system now the major disadvantages since it has to be sprinkled if we include the cost of water sprinkling and the labor cost this actually increases the uh, the total cost nano urea in itself is cheaper than the conventional bag of urea but when all these things are reported there have been higher input cost and as a result farmers are reluctant to use it subsidies have to be provided incentives have been provide have to be provided another concern by icar which has been raised is three seasons consecutively uh, are required for approving any new fertilizer so far we have not seen three seasons pass by simultaneously and therefore uh, the three season data for a single crop is not available and uh, this is one of the reasons or the concerns which make the importance and the use of nano fertilizers as a uh, having an uncertain future or a bleak future as of now the next is 5th june is celebrated as the world environment day now through the world environment day we are talking about internal displacements monitoring refugee cells and as we said there has been a huge burden of migration due to weather related events mainly floods and storms if we break down by the hazards this is the list that we actually see highest number of migration seen because of floods droughts and landslides the next is groundswell report by world bank introduced in september 2021 now climate change could force nearly 216 million people in six regions of the world to move within their own countries by 2050 this would also emerge as the hottest spots of climate change by 2030 and they would further intensify by 2050 sub saharan africa is one of the worst affected areas follows by east pacific south asia and there have been a huge toll of poor people which have been affected by it the next important topic for today's discussion is industrial effluence now uh, there have been a combination of gases for example hydrogen sulfide which causes asphyxia oxygen deprivation when you are inhaling the poisonous gases uh, industries releasing untreated effluents into either the municipal sewer or the atmosphere have to be checked in punjab in ludhiana itself there are 2000 uh, polluting industries of the total polluting industries which are 2500 in punjab now most of them are involved either in dyeing or electroplating and surface treatments now this water goes into the rivulet emptying into the satluj river and this has to be graded as class c that is drinking source without convention with conventional treatment followed by disinfection or grade e which is suitable for industrial cooling not for drinking so water quality of the satluj has been graded as class c and now has dropped to class e there has to be environmental pollution act the water prevention uh, and control acts for treating the effluent treatments not just the region of punjab we have seen the similar cases in gujarat the wapi area which is again an industrial cluster with 500 units the two rivers here are the man ganga and kolak and the treating effluents from the wapi uh, the sewage reaches to the kolak 
uh, which is the natural drain and the effluents reach to the Manganga. Both of these rivers are facing the same issue. Nearly half of the units in Wapi are related to chemical tie and dye textile and again the concentration of the suspended flu solids is very high. Uh, it is beyond the prescribed norms uh, of 167 beyond the prescribed norms of 100. Similarly is the dissolved solids against the prescribed norms which is less. The same goes with chloride, sulfate, cyanide. Uh, the next is what India needs to do. India has already enacted the Water Act, uh, the Environmental Protection Act, the CPCB. However, the guidelines need to be updated time to time. How much is generated, how much is treated must be taken into account. And as per the latest data, NGT is checking for the river pollution, the effluent generation and the treatment. The report has to be submitted in a holistic picture. And the section 16F of the Water Act talks about legally disseminating the information on waste generation treatment and disposal so cpcb has to collect the information publish it and release the statistical data for water pollution now what are the inspections for if it is in the orange category yearly inspection if it is in a red highly polluting category uh, inspection twice in a year if it is grossly polluting which is sugar textile bleaching dyeing quarterly inspections are required. Now the data as per the state wise differentiation we can say that no data has been seen from Assam, Bihar, Gujarat and Jharkhand. Uh, treatment capacity data alone has come from uh, Rajasthan and the further data has been available from this. There has been time to change the treatment of the wastewater needs to be done. Targeted approach with legal framework needs to be taken into account and an impo improved compliance. Now US is one of the original United States is the originator and the major hub of the patent systems. Every year there are 5,000 to 6,000 patents which are filed in the United States alone. And the special 301 report talks about the laws on IP across 100 countries that US trades with. And there is again a priority watch which talks about the serious concerns which are raised. Some other information that we need to understand is uh, Cheetahs are integral part and Divya Bhanu uh, Singh has written a story of Indian Cheetahs which was published in 1995 and this has launched another chapter of India's project Cheetah recently. Bhopal has become the first city in India to localize the UN Sustainable Development Goal by voluntarily reviewing the local developments. There has been a separate state-wise census being conducted for elephants uh, the, in the month of May because the nationwide census for the elephants was not conducted and Jharkhand also was included in the list where Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and Telangana worked for it. So those were some of the key things that we have discussed discussed for today. Uh, the down to earth summary would be available uh, on the examrace.com uh, website in the current affairs section and also if you are looking for the mains answer writing our special session on the mains answer writing would be uh, organized in Ahmedabad so you can join us for the same the details for it would be available in the description below. Thanks for joining in.